Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome back to the channel and uh, I pray that you all are doing well. If you guys don't know where I'm located, I'm located in New York City in the United States of America. Recently there's been a push to make abortion illegal in the United States and a lot of states are pushing against it but a lot of states are pushing for it. Abortion laws are essentially restricting women from deciding whether or not they can have the baby or not. Now you might be thinking, mashallah that's good, Islam doesn't allow abortions and I'm happy that this country is taking the stance on no abortions because there's no abortions in Islam. Well, that's what you think is happening, but that's not exactly what is actually happening. With this recent ban and the news being all about abortions, a lot of Muslim pages have been talking about how women should have a choice to have abortions and how Islam somehow supports abortions and it's a woman's body, her rights, you know, the typical thing. So if you're watching this video right now, you want to know what is the Islamic stance on abortion and can a Muslim woman have an abortion? Say what? Before we jump into this video and get started to answer that question, I want you all to smash this video with a huge thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed to this channel before we move forward. You need to do those two things right now. And just know that this answer is going to be very controversial and so is this video. So a lot of people might disagree with this video and a lot of people might agree with this video. But the number one question that everyone must be asking is, are you even qualified to talk about this subject? Well, let me ask you, are you qualified to brush your teeth? Okay, that's a bad example. You wanna know my qualifications? I want you to go in the description below right now and click that link and you'll find that there isn't a link because I'm not qualified to have the discussion. I'm just a Muslim dude just like you with an opinion and I'm sharing my opinion according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Does that mean I need to be a scholar to talk about these things? Absolutely not. The second objection some of you might have, oh, you're gonna teach us about Islam? Haram, look at your tattoos, brother. Get those removed first before you talk to me about Islam. Well, if that's the case, you're pretty much a loser. Your judgment as to who is qualified versus not qualified is based upon the visual effect of things. And if that's the case, you probably buy really good looking food that tastes really nasty, but you're okay with that because at least it looks pretty for the gram. So the question is, is abortion haram? And I want to, I want to preface this conversation with stating a few of the arguments that I often hear from pro-abortion Muslims, which sounds even a weird thing to say, about abortions. Here are their arguments. Abortion is allowed as long as it's done for the 120 days before the soul is put inside or there's a heartbeat of the baby. So if a sister is raped, you're telling me they have to have that baby? Oh no, she didn't. I just want to preface this right now. All those arguments are valid. Say what? I repeat, those arguments are valid, but those arguments are extreme. Let me address that first. There are sisters, may Allah protect them, who do get sexually assaulted who do get raped. If you're talking about abortions, I'm pretty sure there's certain leniencies and condition and situational points where you could speak to a scholar and find this information out that abortion might be a valid reason. And we're talking about rape. You were raped and you're not going to have a child of a rapist. Like, come on, that's crazy. Or other conditions that are medical, such as maybe you have some autoimmune disease that is going to hurt you if you become pregnant or perhaps if you've conceived, your health is at jeopardy or that classic diagnosis in which the doctor tells you it's either you or the baby. And those are also very conditional situations. If a person is raped, that's an extreme situation and we ask Allah to protect those who have been raped and protect our sisters from any type of trouble like that whatsoever. And sexual assault and rape is no joke. There's so many sisters who have been sexually assaulted but they don't want to speak about it because of the sheer embarrassment of this entire topic. And we naturally have a very victim blaming sort of mentality in the Muslim community in which if we found out that a sister get raped, somehow, some way, we will say that it's her fault for even stepping out the house. So again, that's an extreme situation and condition. Now, as far as the medical situation concerned, those are valid concerns, right? Like you don't want to lose your life to get a life. That's sort of counterproductive. If there is some type of disease, if there's some type of health issue that would cause you harm and you spoke to some type of knowledgeable person, I'm pretty sure they would come with some type of agreement which makes sense in a conditional sort of situation in which abortion is allowed. However, Let's talk about the reality. The reality is that most abortions are taking place according to the research done by SQ because of lack of contraception. Most of the abortions are taking place because the lack of you taking a plan B pill. Most of the abortions that take place 
place is because you're just not ready to have a baby, plain and simple. You might not be financially ready. You might have done a mistake, such as you're in a haram relationship and you have a baby out of wedlock. And if there's any other situation that you can think of, tell me in the comment section below. But those are very common cases. You perhaps weren't expecting a baby and you might not be financially ready for the baby or your house isn't big enough or for whatever reason, maybe it's too early in your marriage to have the baby, whatever it might be. The point is that this baby was unexpected and you're not prepared to have this baby. So one of the options that you might immediately think of is abortion. Now we talked about valid reasons and excuses and I want to pose this question to you. Any of the reasons besides the rape and the medical conditions that I've given you, I want you to tell me in the comment section below. Do you think all of those other situations that I've listed right here are any of those valid excuses or reasons to have an abortion? Tell me in the comment section below. The truth of the matter is that a lot of the rules in our society is based upon perception. It's based upon what's correct right now. It's not based upon what's correct forever. It's based upon what's correct right now. And let me give you an example. Certain films, movies that came out once upon a time that were rated R in today's rating would be rated PG-13, okay? Or even maybe PG that is suitable for most viewers. Back in the day, if a woman had a little bit of cleavage showing, that's immediately rated R. Today, you can have a movie that has implications of sexual natures of stuff and conduct and it'd still be rated PG-13. Once upon a time, films that had swears or curses in them were rated R. Now, you can get an occasional swear here and there from a PG movie even. In our world right now, society is what dictates what's right from what's wrong. And we need to move away from that as Muslims because once upon a time, society agreed in Germany that killing the most amount of Jews was a very noble thing to do. And look where that got us. In today's society, people dictate what the rules and the regulations should be. People dictate what's right from what's wrong. What makes us Muslim is that Allah and his messenger وسلم, has already dictated to us till the end of time what's always going to be right and what's always going to be wrong. And that's something that you and I have to submit to. If you and I want to call ourselves Muslims, we need to submit to that divine book and decree of the Almighty because he's already made everything clear to us from now until the day of judgment as far as to what is right from what is wrong. So you and I don't have to scratch our heads and wonder, hey, I wonder if abortion is correct just because Gigi Hadid is saying it's correct or just because some other Muslim pages are suggesting that it's a correct thing to do. I don't care who it is. I don't care what person is thinking that something is correct. Just because they say it's okay doesn't mean it's okay. But if Allah says it's not okay, if his messenger them said it's not okay, then it's not okay. As Muslims, our guidelines, our rubric is based upon the book of Allah and that will never change. Societal rules will change, but the book of Allah, the word of Allah will never change. And that's something that you and I as Muslims have to decide upon. You and I have to agree and understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us our code and conduct for the rest of our lives and for our children's lives and their generation's lives and their generation's lives. They're protected so long as we follow these rules and regulations, which are designed, by the way, to protect us and to give us stability in an unstable world. You and I don't have to worry about what our future generations might follow because if it's Islam, then they're going to be guided. They don't have to worry about laws being passed. If things society has said that something is legal when Allah has already made it illegal. But even if this response is hurting you right now, you're like, SQ, how can I trust a book from 1400 years ago. SQ, this is old information. We have new technology and information now. Why should I follow that old way of living? Well, then you need to check your Iman. There's something wrong. There's a disconnect between your beliefs and your values. Your beliefs tell you to believe in the book of Allah, the word of Allah, and the messenger Sallallahu but your values are telling you that, oh, but Gigi Hadid says it's okay. So that means it's okay to have an abortion or, you know, this Muslim girls page is saying that, oh, it's okay to have abortion, women's rights, women's choice, pro-choice, and women have the right to decide what they want to do with their body. Then believe in that. That's fine. But also believe the fact that Allah is going to question you about this. And by you doing this sort of stuff is changing the book and the words of Allah. Yes, I've said it, ladies and gentlemen, you're changing the book of Allah by adding new ideas into the religion 
You have changed this religion up and that is essentially what an innovation is. You're innovating in this book with your own rules, your own regulations, your own thought process from what's right, from what's wrong. Allah has already declared for us what's right from wrong. The Messenger Sallallahu has already clarified for us what's right from wrong. So don't come over here telling me or telling the next Muslim what's right from wrong. It doesn't matter how backwards you and I might look. It's not about looking backwards, it's about acting backwards and killing children and having this ideology that you can decide to kill a child when you want to decide to kill a child, that's, that's on you. I'm not going to tell you what's right from wrong. Allah has already made that clear for us. But I want to ask you, when does this stop? When does this stop? L let me give you an example. In India, they've made it illegal for sonograms. Checking out the gender of the baby, they've made that illegal. Why? Because having a girl in India is so shameful. It's so shameful. Look at this jahiliya. It's so shameful that when husbands find out that their wife is having a girl or a daughter, they force an abortion upon her because they only want sons. So India has made it illegal for you to have sonograms to protect the life of the child. Now I want to push this thinking a little bit more. What happens when you find out that your in-laws want to have a baby boy? Every in-law does for some reason want to have a baby boy. The pride and joy is having a murda. All of a sudden you want to have a larka. They find out that you're having a girl. Do you know how many people get shamed? Shamed in their family when their families and in-laws find out that they're having a girl? They're afraid to tell their families that they're having a girl. Well, with this new solution, what she can do easily, easily, mashallah, what an amazing solution. Just go have an abortion. Just schedule one from an app. I'm sure there's gonna be some abortion app on your phone. Go schedule an abortion and then you're good to go. You and your husband could just try again. But you know what you're gonna to have to live with? The trauma of doing that for the rest of your life. I know people who've gotten abortions done for whatever reason they got it done. Most of the people I know who got it done was because they were in a haram relationship and they got pregnant through the haram relationship so they wanted to get rid of the baby as the baby serves as evidence for their sin. And do you know how traumatic and guilty they feel till this day being years that they've had this abortion because it's something that a woman has to live with for the rest of their lives that they killed their baby. They won't even know what that baby feels like, what their name could have the baby been, that hug from that baby doesn't exist because you killed that baby because of your choice and it traumatizes them. And don't think for a second that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't bring that baby back to you on the day of judgment and present that baby to ask them that major question that they wanted to ask their mother. Why? Why'd you do that? Because at the time when people were burying their daughters alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that he's going to bring back their daughters on the day of judgment, the babies, and ask the parents why they did that sort of thing. Don't think that that's just limited to the fact that they were alive and got buried. Just know that the baby is very much alive in here too, but you're still choosing to eliminate that baby. I want to know your feedback and thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on abortion? What are your thoughts about Muslims being pro-abortion? I want you to tell me in the comment section below. And I just want to make this clear that no matter how modern we get, modern, Islam is the most modern thing we could ever follow because someone could be modern but be backwards at the same time. People are so modern right now, yet they're still wiping their backsides with toilet paper. Everyone is talking about going green, yet they haven't figured out how to use a lota, bro. A lota would save like the the world of its problems because we wouldn't be wasting trees and paper anymore. We'd be going green. So as modern as the world is, we're still backwards in some senses. Remember something that the best of guidance has already come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't think that you need to somehow update your lifestyle to match what society wants. Allah has already given us that update till the end of time and we don't need anything else. Yes, in certain times there are conditions that need to get met and we can meet those conditions as well. But these were my thoughts on abortions drop your thoughts in the comment section below and i love you all for the sake of allah make sure that you smash this video with a huge thumbs up make sure you share this with all your pro-abortion or pro-life people and hear their thoughts i want to know what your thoughts were about my take drop your feedback and thoughts in the comment section below i love you all for the sake of allah tell me in the comment section below what should we talk about next and until next time i'm out